many of our children are going to school. And this has been the story for the last 50 years we have had independence. They go to school because there's a belief that parents have, a belief that families have, that going to school gives them the skills and competences that they need. was that, okay, if we build enough schools, if we have enough teachers, if we have enough teaching learning material in classrooms, then this fuzzy thing called learning will kind of happen. Focus has really just been on enrolling kids into school and making sure they attend and progress. It hasn't been on the other part, the plus learning. So we've really learned that um, we need both. We began to really feel this invisible problem, which was the fact that children are in school, attending fairly regularly, but really not at the level that they need to be. So I would say that we have a learning crisis. But it was very hard to make that case and get policymakers to pay attention because we didn't have data. We didn't have evidence. Making that shift in a very powerful constituency was hard work. And we needed something incredibly powerful to do that. invented this tool of household-based, very lightweight evaluations. You know, you don't take a lot of people's time, you don't take a lot of organizations. You can do it in remote districts using volunteers. How does the assessment work? What we do is we pick a district. India has more than 600 districts. So we go to every district in the country. We identify, and sometimes people identify us, a local organization or an institution or a college or an NGO. And what they do is, they go to a sample of villages in the district, and in the villages, you sample kids. There's a process that we use. We utilize volunteers who live in the villages that are sampled. You point and it is. We train them, then we equip them with the assessment materials and they walk from house to house assessing children. I am six years old. My school is Kasese Primary School. Un enfant qui peut lire des mots, qui peut lire des, des lettres, qui peut lire des mots, des textes, des paragraphes. Et faire des, répondre à la question de compréhension, on dit que cet enfant a validé les tests euh, d'évaluation. There is a lot of really sophisticated technical work on how to properly assess learning. And you have many different methods depending on the different type of assessment. And some, like national exams, assess every kid, right, who gets to a certain level. Others, um, such as international tests that compare results of different countries, just takes a, a sample, a randomized sample, to make sure it's representative. When you go into a household, you're testing all kids. You're not just testing the kids who happen to be in school on that particular day. We want to do the assessment when the parents are also watching, so that they're able to see the learning levels of the children, to be able to also act and focus on the learning of the children. The thing um, that I think not many people necessarily know is what a broad scale it's done under. They have assessed huge numbers of kids. Like the case of Kenya, every year we go to over 90,000 households and we assess more than 150,000 children. Now, if you're the Minister for Education, if you're the Minister for Finance, making decisions around how do I allocate my money, how do I ensure accountability, this data is incredibly useful because it allows you to zero in and focus on where there are problems. We need to empower the local communities, the ordinary citizen, to be able to monitor the learning outcomes of the children. When you did this assessment, then parents and other family members and other community people would come around and say, what is it that you're doing? Tous les enfants, souvent quand on arrive dans un village, les enfants sélectionnés, on teste. Les enfants, il y a d'autres mamans, d'autres parents qui prennent les enfants. Mais testez mon enfant, dites-moi qu'est-ce qu'il qu 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 vaut, qu'est-ce que son niveau vaut. 
Echikize chukanga nchina chiozi sa kunde chitichipa de chivi. Eka chimpa de chifana nyi. Chiru nyi tukugamba. Olabo mpuna fuma na wawe vuli. Olusi nwakubaba na kaitipa sivu deko ugena. Nolaba nubu. Sinza kwa li chitu wanyo ntubaba nubu na fubu wa msumisa. Nubu ganti ya betuli no kuata gani ya mba wenga. So we did our first national asar in 2005. Pakistan visited us in 2006 or 2007. So they did their first small asar in 2008. It's roughly the same time that the East African countries came. And they came in several different waves around the same time. So as we are reaching our 10th year, they are reaching their 5th year. Mali and Senegal joined the, the family in around 2010-11. I think part of what's really unique about you know, the citizen-led assessment model is the fact that it's South-South. It's led by countries in the South. And it is a very, very good example of how developing countries can support each other, given the fact that some of the realities that they face are very similar to each other. So the problems mostly that we run into are that who are you to decide uh, what gaps there are, who are you to decide what issues to address, it's not your job. They will say, but, but you are just using volunteers who come from the villages. But I think it is time not to be apologetic about that. These volunteers are citizens of this country and they are trained. There are those who also feel that you cannot do an assessment in the household, that the household is not the place to look at something you know, as formal as reading and writing. I always ask, where do people live? We don't live in institutions like We live in the society, we live in our homes. When you measure year after year and you don't see big progress, then people begin to get a little disheartened. And often people will say, what's the point of measuring if it doesn't lead to change? To which we counter by saying, if somebody is sick and you're struggling to find the medicine, do we stop taking their temperature? You know, you kind of need to keep doing that. And at the same time, figuring out how you can bring about a change in the condition. When the Asar numbers started coming out from India, it was very eye-opening and you could have a conversation about learning outcomes in India, across India, uh, in a way that you just couldn't before. Is this a governance question? Is it an accountability question? Is it a transparency question? And these are all big words and they probably mean a lot to many people. But I think it's a very straightforward thing that you can't begin to be part of the solution until you understand the problem. Bringing learning to the fore, right? Having debates about it and having conversations about it and having the media involved in it creates a lot of pressure on the government itself. These citizen-led assessments have, have really affected the conversation about what it means to measure the quality of education, the objectives of education, and, and ultimately what, what, what an education system is, is producing. You can see now that there's a shift from inputs, being proud of the number of children who are enrolled in school, to focusing on the right thing, whether the children are learning. If you don't focus on the early levels of learning, then you are giving children a shaky foundation. If they can't read, they can't count, how are we going to talk about analytical skills, uh, critical thinking, all those other life skills they are supposed to acquire? Donc ça, ce n'est plus un tabou pour personne, que ce soit le gouvernement, que ce soit les, les citoyens ordinaires. Avant, les communautés au Mali, surtout les parents d'élèves, ne pensaient pas qu'ils avaient un rôle à jouer dans l'éducation. Pour eux, l'éducation, c'était l'affaire des décideurs, c'était l'affaire du gouvernement. Policymakers can participate by also looking at reality. Having a policy framework, having curriculum frameworks that cannot be implemented mean there is nothing wrong with our kids or perhaps with our families or teachers. It's what we are expecting from them. At policy level, uh, there is now increasing acceptance that learning is a huge problem. There are the government's policy documents which talk about uh, learning outcomes. The Planning Commission's 12th five-year plan document uh, talks about uh, learning outcomes and talks about articulating goals in terms of uh, uh, learning outcomes. For the next five years, focusing on reading is a key investment program for the ministry in Kenya. 
So we can say that uh, our evidence has contributed. Saying something is a problem is in itself, uh, I think, a policy change. I mean, you have, for example, in Tanzania, you have a formal uh, policy decision by the government to, in fact, test children on basic literacy and numeracy at the early grade level. So it's all becoming more and more valuable over time as we get more countries, we get more benchmarks, we get more years. I think that this is something which is building. And it certainly helped move the needle to say that we can actually get measures and statistics on learning outcomes. And today, we, I think the different efforts in the different countries together reach more than a million children a year. And it's really amazing how simple things can go really far. <laughs> So as we move into the future, let us focus on the access of the children and their learning, easily measure the learning outcomes on a continuous basis, but also let us empower the communities to be able to, to know that the system is functioning, either to act themselves, but also to hold those who are responsible accountable, the schools, the government. If they don't have the information and understanding of how the system is functioning, they won't be able to demand what they deserve, and what they deserve is quality education of their children. By helping to shift the focus on learning outcomes, by helping to shift the focus on how we spend our resources, by sharpening the debate on the types of policies and programs we need, that we will in fact have better learning, and in doing so, fulfill that promise for millions of poor people, that education in fact is liberation, that education in fact will help you have a much better life.